Hey guys, I'm ZSH Plays and welcome back to Tekton Zoo. Hope you enjoyed that little Blade Runner tribute there. Today's build looks pretty good at night, so I thought I'd give you a sneak peek. If you haven't guessed, today we are finally building the Komodo Dragon House that we've been planning for a couple of months now. So let's take a look at where we are now. This wooden box has been sat here since we built the Crocodile and Cayman Center, and today we're going to turn it into the Komodo Dragon House. All right, so let's talk about the inspiration for this build first of all. So this is based on a real building which I saw uh, a few months ago and the second I saw it I was like that is my reptile house um, it looks like a giant reptile <laughs> um, it's really cool um, it's actually of all things an art museum in Sao Paulo in Brazil and I just saw a picture of it and yeah I loved it uh, straight away so um, originally it was going to be my reptile house then I decided I didn't really want a reptile house or a traditional uh, reptile house, you know, just a big building with all the reptiles in. I wanted to do something a bit more unique for each type of animal. So uh, it was briefly going to be a saltwater crocodile house. Then, for reasons which you'll see when we finish it, um, or when we get a bit more of it built anyway, uh, filling this building full of water would make precisely zero sense. So I decided uh, then that it would be the Komodo Dragon House, and that has been my plan for about two months now. Just waited to get to the part of the zoo where it was going to go. So I'm really excited to finally be building it. So as you can see, the whole building is essentially suspended about seven meters above the ground on these giant legs, which is what gives it that uh, reptilian sort of feel. So it's required me to do something which I've never done before, which uh, has been tricky, <laughs> which is to essentially raise the terrain up to the level of this habitat's upper floor and then slice it all away again. So I'm just left with a little sliver of terrain that runs like a little, uh, little wafer <laughs> through the floor of this building so that I can put habitat on it. Uh, and yeah, that took me a long time because uh, it's not something I've ever done before but um, it worked really well and I'm really happy with it and there was no other way to do it being able to see through the um, or see underneath rather the building when you walk up to it was sort of the its main design feature so it needed to be just a little sliver of terrain here so I can put these barriers in I'm using mainly null barriers because the building's walls will act as the, the main barrier for the animals and then there'll be glass along the front here and then a little bit of concrete etc around where the keeper gate goes this was tough <laughs> uh, I've edited out so much in the video here but um, trying to get the game to recognize the where I wanted the keeper gate to go and then as you can see here I've left a bit in uh, trying to get the paths to attach to it was an absolute nightmare <laughs> um, and it leaves a big old lump of terrain underneath the habitat door that I could not get rid of. I don't think you can get rid of it, um, but if I'm wrong and it is possible, please let me know in the comments and I'll go back and, uh, well, I won't change it because I covered it up quite nicely with a, um, a different idea, which we'll get to later. But um, just in general, that would be really good to know because I had the same issue with the Penguin Palace as well. So I'm just extending all the glass panels along here so that there's a nice big uh, viewing window and we'll put some custom uh, walls into here rather than use the in-game ones bit more pathing. I couldn't get it perfect but I've got it so that the guests will go where I want them to go um, and the, uh, the little bits that you see left over will be covered up. Uh, so let's turn this wooden box into a building now. Um, almost entirely glass, the building itself. And then the whole thing is supported on these giant legs that we'll add in later and that appears to keep it up. Um, I'm guessing it's got steel or something like that inside the legs to provide enough sort of strength to keep the building like that. While I think of it, I hope you're okay with the uh, the two week wait between episodes. This is the longest between Tekton episodes that I've had, um, but I really enjoyed making the flooded forest video that I put out last week. I uh, had a lot of fun doing that. And it's actually been uh, my most popular video in the few days that it's been out. So it seems that people enjoyed it. I'll definitely be doing more of those. Uh, it's also really helped to have some time to deal with some of the technical problems that I've had with this build in terms of the uh, the terrain and the habitat gate, etc. So um, it's good to have that bit of extra time to do that. Um, I do intend to try and keep having a video out each week. 
Um, but yeah, Tecton will definitely be every two weeks, as I've said. Uh, but I'll try and get another video out in the week between the Tecton episodes as well. I've already got a good um, idea for the next Planet Wild episode. Uh, so hopefully uh, that will be out in a week's time, uh, but we'll have to see. I'm working on a collaboration zoo as well at the moment with some very good builders, uh, which I'm hoping I'll be able to share with you guys pretty soon. Anyway, back to, uh, back to this build. So it's time to put the roof on. It's going to be a few different levels of roof to get the uh, the look that I want, which is very similar to the, the look of the real building. I've changed a few things, obviously, to make it work as a Komodo dragon house um, and a little bit of the colour scheme, but this isn't actually too far from the, uh, the real building, really. I'm going to cut some holes into the roof to put glass into the roof. Uh, I don't know if the real one has glass, but um, Obviously it's really important to have really good lighting in here uh, so you can see the animals. So I've built this um, for once I've actually <laughs> remembered to check where the sun is before I build something. So um, as the sun rises it comes through the windows you can see here and then throughout the day it shines through the windows at the front. So the lighting's really good throughout the day here. These are the legs that I mentioned. I think they're, they were sort of red in the original building. I've made them the Tecton orange uh, that I use as much as I can. Um, again, in the real building, it's slightly different. You'll see in a second that the, th these legs that I'm working on now extend uh, across the top of the building. In my version, I've just done that to the back legs um, so that it doesn't obscure the windows so we can get some good lighting into the building. And at sunset, the lighting inside the building is, uh, is pretty spectacular. Now, you know I love a sign, and um, I think this one is my favorite sign in the zoo. I've put a load of lights on here, which are on permanently, which really make this stand out, and especially uh, in the dark, as you'll have seen at the start of this episode. It looks, it looks really good, it's really striking. I love that color combo of black and orange. Normally it's white and orange in the zoo, obviously, but um, I used black and then a sort of stained wood orangey kind of color in the cheetah conservation center so i think it works really nicely together this newer part of the zoo with uh, some slightly more adventurous color schemes than the just white with the occasional orange highlight that the rest of the zoo has now this is that bit of terrain i mentioned earlier underneath the uh, the habitat door or keeper gate um, i'm covering it up with this column which i'm going to fill with water and it's going to be an aquarium obviously being planet zoo it will be an implied aquarium at the moment but who knows, maybe one day uh, there'll be some fish in there, but it's just gonna be coral and water pretty much at the moment. Uh, we'll come back and finish that off in a second. But let's take a look at um, how the building is coming along. So looking pretty nice from up here. It's a really striking shape. But once we put the landscaping in around it, it sits in really nicely. Onto the inside of the uh, Komodo Dragon House. Uh, I was gonna call this the Dragon's Lair, uh, but then I realized that um, Eben called his Komodo Dragon House that in Tamachali Zoo, so uh, I decided not to. Uh, so it doesn't officially have a name, uh, it just says Komodo Dragon on it in big ass letters. Uh, I think that will um, encourage people in, doesn't really need a fancy name, I guess. Uh, I want the entrance to be all rock work and planting, so just using a load of the rocks here to cover up the brickwork, and then we'll put some plants uh, that are suitable for the environment in there. It's pretty scrubby um, on Komodo. Doesn't really have the look of a tropical Indonesian island that you expect. Some of the other islands in that chain are really beautiful, uh, but Komodo itself is pretty sort of um, dusty. Um, not a great deal of plants. Not actually a great deal of animals either, surprisingly. Apart from the obvious inhabitants, there's um, some deer, which is the Komodo dragon's favorite source of food, um, some bison, and then a few other smaller animals. Um, but the waters around Komodo and that chain of islands, the uh, Sunda Islands, are really rich, uh, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to put an aquarium under here. There's a lot of coral reefs around there, and loads of incredible uh, fish, sharks, dolphins, whales, etc. Um, this is the actual habitat itself. Um, this was supposed to be a lot more interesting looking. This little corner here is pretty nice. 
Uh, the rest of it, uh, basically when I added the Komodo Dragons in, their hitboxes are insane. They're like, you put one tiny little rock in, and that knocks out about, you know, 20 square meters of, of their traversable area. So I made it all look really nice, and then deleted bits and deleted bits and deleted bits until they finally uh, stopped complaining. But yeah, so the um, aside from this corner you can see on the left, which I've done a lot of work on, the rest of it's pretty bare bones, mainly just their enrichment items and whatever plants or rocks I could get away with. So it doesn't quite look how I wanted it to, to be honest, but that was uh, that was all I could do in the in the space that I had. I actually already made this building bigger than it was to begin with. When you saw the sort of wooden box at the start of the episode, I've actually increased it in size since then. And the traversable area, when I um, finished the habitat, was well over their requirements well over their requirements and then I put them in and they could barely walk over any of it so lots of changes in there um, this is the backstage area so I'm putting a large door in to, so you can get the uh, the dragons in and out uh, and then we'll put a smaller door in for the more everyday use and signage and um, stuff like that I was actually lucky enough to see a Komodo dragon at London Zoo a couple of weeks ago uh, I've seen them before quite a few times, mostly at London Zoo, but I also saw them at San Diego Zoo, and every time I see one, it's asleep. <laughs> I'd literally never seen one of those guys move, and then we went to London Zoo, and this guy was very active indeed. I'll show you a little bit of um, footage that I got, but he was right next to the glass where I was, uh, and it was really amazing to see it. It's not quite a dragon, but that is one impressive lizard. Um, just going to finish off the inside um, or the guest part of the build and then we'll finish off the habitat itself. These new mud panels that came in the Africa pack are so useful um, because they're recolorable and if you're careful uh, I managed to match the sand pretty much exactly here so where I run out of terrain um, from outside the enclosure you can't see that where the terrain ends and the mud panel begins it just looks like one big area of sand so I was really um, I'm really happy with that. Um, I'm gonna put a little gate in here for the staff. I was watching to see where they walked through this wall because I can't get rid of the path, uh, and then just put a door in there so it looks a bit better. And um, yeah, this is where we are right now. We're gonna finish up the aquarium next, and then landscape all around here to tie this in with the crocodiles and caimans area that is next to it. Ah, but before we do that, let's just put some signage inside the building done some nice little uh, signs here just to set the scene and then this is a little trick um, that I like where you use the 2d text and then just copy it loads of times behind itself select it all as a group and copy it again and you end up with 3d text that's the same size as the 2d text which is really useful in uh, situations like that so I've got the camera where the guests will approach the building from and I'm just moving all the trees into the right position to frame it nicely and then we're going to put some more paths um, and vegetation etc in here so that this looks nice when you're on your way in. I mentioned that the waters around Komodo and those islands are really lush uh, they have coral reefs and all sorts of animal life there so I thought it'd be really good to have an aquarium here which is going to be a, a coral display. I've used some corals which I got off the workshop which really are good they were made by uh, Drac, who's one of my favourite creators, and a creatist, uh, who I've never heard of, uh, but they really know what they're doing <laughs> because these corals look amazing. Um, and this exhibit would be for eagle rays and some smaller fish, etc., that live around these coral reefs in Komodo. It's not a great deal to it, uh, just those workshop items. Uh, and then a bit of planting. Obviously there won't be anything in here for the moment, but uh, you know we can dream. Change the colour scheme as well, um, so it fits in better with the rest of the building. So orange on black, rather than um, white on orange. And then we're gonna finish off the, the garden area in front of it. So this is something I'm doing a lot of at the moment, which is sinking these um, tropical plant boards um, into or plant panels into the ground and you can get a really nice effect that looks different to the standard vegetation in a planet zoo and it's really good for filling in bits of path like this where you've got a gap in the path 
you can't fill it you could maybe run another path through it and end up with lots of little gaps but actually it can look good to just have a big gap and then fill it with plants like this um, and I'll put some real plants on top of the plant boards as well I won't show you the rest of the planting it's pretty repetitive I just copied that a lot and then obviously put loads of trees in but this is the, uh, the final look um, so happy with how this turned out especially once the rest of the zoo is built in around it so it's not stood there on its own it's really imposing um, and I had a lot of fun with the cinematics at the end. Thank you so much for watching. Stick around for the cinematics and I will see you in a couple of weeks time for the next episode. See you later.